tell us more about it. What's been your experience with it in, in the industry as a real estate um, consultant? So, yeah, it's been, it's exciting. Um, I think with the, you know, COVID has exasperated the, the, the already high office vacancies in the various CBDs and metros. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Private Property Podcast right here on our Private Property Facebook page. It is a beautiful day today, and we are we are looking forward to welcoming you. Thank you so much to everybody who is joining us yet again, our regulars. Thank you so much for always coming back. And if you are here for the first time, here on this podcast, we take you through everything property. We take you through buying, selling, investing, and overall just growing your property portfolio. We bring you experts in their own rights, people who are going to give you advice, give you tips and tricks on how you can grow your property portfolio. So if you are joining us for the first time, throw us those beautiful beautiful green hearts. Let us know where you are watching us from. We are absolutely excited to have you here and thank you for joining us. Um, and you're not the only one joining us today. Tonight we have Justine Adrianza, who is a real estate consultant who's going to be talking to us about how under 35s like myself <laughs> are reclaiming South Africa's inner cities. Like we are going back into the CBDs, you know, so many um, office blocks and places that we used to know as offices have now been converted into apartments. People are now living. There's beautiful penthouse these beautiful places, apartments that one can now rent in the inner city. So uh, um, Justine is going to be taking us through all of that. So make sure that you stay tuned if that's something you're interested in. Justine, good evening and welcome. Hi, thank you for having me, to me. Thanks. It, it is your absolute <laughs> <laughs> it's an absolute pleasure. We are looking forward to having the conversation tonight. I mean, this is something really on the pulse. I mean, so many people are moving back into the cities, you know, especially with COVID, working from home. So many offices and office spaces uh, are being turned into apartments and people are now mm. working from home permanently. So um, I just want um, us to talk about this because we've been seeing this, this influx. So many of these developments have been happening. And Tell us more about it. What's been your experience with it in, in the industry as a real estate um, consultant? So, yeah, it's been, it's exciting. Um, I think with the, you know, COVID has exasperated the, the, the already high office vacancies in the various CBDs and metros. Um, for instance, in, in Cape Town, Johannesburg, we had the highest vacancy rate um, on record uh, during COVID and the lockdown. And, you know, obviously, landlords are sitting with these, these empty spaces or empty buildings, and many of them are, um, they are actual urban and not sectional titles. So the landlord owns the entire property. And now he's sitting with these floors that, you know, just basically like it was almost a ghost town in the CBDs. Mm. And um, have now decided to, to re, uh, repurpose these properties and do an office to, con to residential conversion or office to residential and retail uh, conversion. So it's very exciting. Um, and even before, before COVID, um, there was an increase in the, in the vacancy rates, office vacancy rates in the CBDs. So it was already, you know, it was starting to take place that the office buildings were being repurposed for, for residential and why do you think it's becoming so 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 lucrative? Or why do you think people or the younger people, the younger generation, are seeing it um, as something interesting to do? I mean, uh, people are just moving in. You know, they started moving in. And why why do you think they prefer this rather than developments that are like on the outskirts of the cities? Yeah. Well, I mean, thirty five and below, like ourselves, you know, we want to we want the convenience of enjoying the amenities in our in our immediate area. You know, if you stay in the Cape Town CBD, you can get in, get your foot into the property market in a micro apartment, which is, okay, it's small. It's like <laughs> 18 to 23 square meters. But you've got your foot in the market, and those buildings generally have a, um, you know, communal amenities or, you know, they have a rooftop pool area with a beautiful dry facility. Mm -hmm. You've got the, the views of Table Mountain, City Bowl, the Table Bay, and then in the bottom, you have trendy restaurants and bars and um, sure. yeah, 
nightlife and even the day, you know, during the beautiful restaurants you can you can frequent. And it's all within walking distance. And even just commuting, you can drive to the the various promenades, um, and that's maximum ten minute drive. So, you know, yes, you're buying a smaller property, but if you're not starting a family in the next five years, you can enjoy mm -hmm. Cape Town's um, amenities and you know all the different offerings, and then still have your foot in the property market. Um, yeah, I and mean, also once you do move on to the next stage of your life, if that is what you want to do, you have a short-term let option. So, I mean, yeah. generally for tourists, if they come to Cape Town or to um, Durban, for instance, they want to be close to to the various offerings of that city, um, and then you have the short let option, like an Airbnb unit, that you can then um, gain income from once you've moved out yourself. Sure, sure, I see. Um, people talk a lot about how um, cities or, or yeah, inner cities and CBDs don't really or are not the best for, you know, raising children and maybe even inhabiting as humans because, you know, there's all of this um, air pollution and, and industri industrialization and people feel like there's not mm. really a homey, homely feel. Um, do, uh, do, you, do you believe that there's any, I'd, I'd potentially say, risks for people to move um, into the city? Uh, is Are the cities conducive or are they ready to, be, to start accepting people to come live in them and not just work in them? Yeah, for sure. Um, I speak mainly for, for myself would be the Cape Town CBD. Um, we are lucky to have to be on the coast. So yeah. um, we've never really had the, the problem or the, I wouldn't say problem, but the scenario of smog mm. or, or, or air pollution um, sure. because we have that coastal climate. Um, Johannesburg CBD, um, I don't want to speak too much on that because it's not my forte, but mm. um, maybe in that you know, in that respect, like that could be a concern. Um, I know in terms of uh, on the ground pollution, if I could say, or, you know, we've got the CCID here in Cape Town, and I know they've, they've started something similar in Johannesburg, um, with the public safety community, uh, safety, what do you call it, the forum, or, um, mm -hmm. which keeps that, you know, fairly, fairly clean and, and secure. So, yeah, I, I don't think the pollution or, or, you know, yeah, I think there'd be less more to the industrial areas, but I don't, uh, yeah, I think South Africa as a whole, we, our air pollution is is manageable. <laughs> I'm sure. definitely not a, a, um, <laughs> an expert in that, so I'll leave that yeah. to those are not no, sure in the... In the <laughs> Definitely. Um, there's something you said earlier in the conversation, and you spoke a little bit about price. Um, and I would like to mm. delve in that in terms of price. You know, pricing is, is a big factor when, when an under 35 is making a decision because, I mean, you don't want to, to find yourself in a fix at the end of the month. So would you say, mm. in your opinion, um, that these developments that are in the city are more affordable? And if they are more affordable, do they compare to, to what I would have gotten in a development that's in the outskirts of the city? So, not necessarily. Um, mm -hmm. And that, again, for the Cape Town CBD, you know, we, there's only so much land available that there's left to, well, there isn't really much left of land to, to, to develop on site. Mm -hmm. So, um, you are repurposing um, existing buildings. And um, the buildings already do have a value or book value or, you know, what the, what the current owner would like to achieve. So, once you purchase that building, hopefully at um, at a highly reasonable rate, you still need to cost in that conversion. Um, it's not a cheap exercise. Generally, you'd want um, sales off plan before you can get uh, funding to, to do the conversion, um, if that's the route you want to go. So, mm. I would say it is a bit more it is a bit more expensive to buy in a city um, or city bowl, um, but then you're also getting the the convenience of what you have in your immediate sure. yeah your value in your immediate uh, vicinity you know your yeah what the area has to offer um if you look out into to, to the less congested areas you know i would say the prices maybe if in your cbd you're looking at 50 to 60 up to 70,000 rand a square meter uh, mm. purchase price you sure. would see it would be a far cheaper out in the more outlying areas. But mm -hmm. then you've got to travel in to enjoy yes. what we have in the city um, and immediate surrounds. 
So, yes, it is more expensive. But again, um, if you're look, look, looking to get your foot into the market, you can buy a micro apartment um, where your and also the interest rates have dropped. Well, no, they're starting to, to <laughs> increase again. But <laughs> but um, once you decide to move out yourself, if you do, then your short term lease, you know, should also cover that that cost. Mm. Um, you'll get that return back. No, 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 thank you so much for that. Um, if you are only joining us now, we are talking how under 35s are reclaiming South Africa's inner cities. And thank you so much for the engagement that we're already getting on the socials. And earlier on in the week, we asked, um, and this question, uh, it, it's actually, Justine, this question is right up our early because it says, um, <laughs> we asked um, the people on Facebook if you are a Joburg baby, a Cape Town all the way, or an international, you know, person, you know, you want to live internationally. And um, Stefan, Stefan Extien said, definitely the Waterfall Estates. He says Joburg, definitely, because the Waterfall Estates, Blue Hills, Equestrian Estates, Stain City, has, uh, Cape Town has nothing on those estates. <laughs> And, oh really? Okay, <laughs> I've stayed and, at Waterfall, yes. <laughs> and Adams Landy says, "I want the Cape for the mountains." So clearly, Adams doesn't want to live in the inner city. So, um, in your case, uh, and and don't let's not be biased, <laughs> but I know that you're in Cape Town right now. But if you were to choose, right, between all our metropolitans and living in the inner city in the metropolitans, which one would you live in? Um, and I'm not being biased. <laughs> Um, I am familiar with the various CBDs. Um, I have traveled to yeah, I, uh, traveled to the Durban CBD and the Johannesburg CBD before work. Mm. And I would still choose Cape Town. Um, you know, it's big as a safety concern. Um, and we have mm. got a great, the CCID is fantastic. Um, I know the, the organization very well. Um, it's, it's clean. Um, and you know, you have got the mountain views, you've got the ocean views. I mean, some of these developments, like Foreshore Place, for instance, once you're on the 50th floor, on the one side, you've got the mountain. On the other side, you've got the harbour. On the other side, you've yeah. got Greenpoint Stadium. You know, so it's, it's incredible, these, like, panoramic, almost 360 views that you have. Um, yeah. So it's not being biased. <laughs> it is just a beautiful city. So, yeah. Sure. Thank you so much for that. And you, you just mentioned something very important in terms of safety. And I would like to jump to uh, the kind of features that one should look out for. Like if I'm considering moving back into the inner cities, um, what are the sort of features that I should be thinking? Because some people would, you know, you, you're not typically going to have a garden, you know, and, and yes. picket fence. But what would you look for then? What are the things you should look out for? Um, most certainly, you know, if you'd want parking, <laughs> no, it's, um, it seems <laughs> almost obvious, but mm. you don't want to be leaving your car. If you do travel by car, you don't want to be leaving it on the street. Um, mm. you know, yeah, you, you definitely like a parking bay that you drive into, especially at night. Um, CCTV, 24-hour security, you know, ideally a concierge service or just an armed security at the desk mm. um, if you're walking into the building. Um, in terms of... Um, so I know I've said the word amenity so often, but it is a, it's a very valid point. Is that sure? You no, want, definitely. You know, you look for a building that has a rooftop pool, because if you maybe are buying, a, I mean, because the cost are per square meter to purchase in the city or mm. immediate surrounds is more expensive. You want that. You want to know that development will have extra offerings like a pool, um, a rooftop pool, or a, um, a bright facility, maybe a gym. Um, you look for high speed internet or fiber, double glazing um, for noise block, you know, mm. to, to reduce noise. Um, mm. And then obviously, yeah, look, because you're also buying a small unit, if you can't have a balcony, then maybe a Juliet mm. balcony, just so that your doors open out to, you know, oh, yeah. you, know that you can't walk out of the bal onto the balcony, but it just opens out onto something, you know, feel like you're boxed into these four walls. Mm. So, yeah. Um, Views, you know, if you're living in an apartment and it's, if it's a smaller one, you don't want to feel boxed in. So big windows, mm. um, natural light um, is always stunning. Um, and views. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on which city yes. you're living in, but views. you want those views. <laughs> 
Yeah, yes. no, the, the city skylines yeah. at night are absolutely amazing. You know, yes. I've experienced some absolutely. of them in, in Joburg and Cape Town, and I can I can tell you they are absolutely yes. absolutely amazing. So I just want um talk us through um, some of the developments, maybe um, in your opinion that um, one should look out for to say specifically in in these areas. This is where mm. you should look for. This is um this is where you would look. And I know that you you sp- you specifically spoke about Cape Town, but you can just maybe mm. name drop talk call a little bit of those, uh, I don't know if we call them mini suburbs that are actually in the city because they are now becoming um, these these yeah. areas that's where people specifically live. Um, do you do you mm-hmm. mind you know just talking us through some of them? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, yeah, in like in, in the Cape Town CBD, we actually have we've got the CBD itself, which is like the heart of the city. We've got the mm. the financial district. We've got the foreshore city ball and several. So like for instance, the foreshore. Um, we have Harbour Arch that's coming up. We've got Foreshore Place that um, used to be the, well, the old APSA building. They've put an enormous uh, capex into that into that property, and um, I think it's 32 floors, and a portion of that is residential, and it is incredible. So it's, it's mixed use again. It's retail on the ground mm-hmm. floor, um, an office component, and and residential. You could also you can uh, purchase those those residential units. Um, Abland property developers are building uh, the Rubik, which will also be split between that's in Loop Street, in the heart of the CBD, um, and that will be also ground retail and um, office and residential with the rooftop pool again. Mm. Beautiful views of um, Signal Hill li- Signal Hill Lines, mm. Cable Mountain, and yeah. the Cable Bay. Um, we've got the few. Not 51 Ambri, sorry, 16 Ambri, which is actually just residential and retail. Mm. Um, that's at the bottom of Reef Street, also stunning. And um, some of the micro apartments, I, gosh, I, I don't want to speak under correction, but I think it's called Look Solo. Um, those are purely micro apartments, um, 18 mm. square meters. Um, that's also in the CBD. And then you've got the Rockefeller on the foreshore, also micro apart hotel. Um, another concept of part of it, so you can purchase a unit and then also have it um, gone if it goes into a rental pool as part of the hotel, um, or you can stay there yourself. And there's also micro units from 18 to 23, I think there's also two bedrooms in, the, in that development. Mm. So, yeah, they spread across, um, they across spread the across. city. Yes, yeah, yeah. We are receiving amazing love from our, our, our family on Facebook. And um, a lot of people might uh, want to know or would like to know what is the difference because um, uh, we're hearing a bit of jargon come through there in terms of your micro apartments, apartment hotels. Maybe would you like to take us through what the difference is and where you would believe um, a first-time buyer would go and someone who just wants to increase their property uh, portfolio would mm-hmm. go and, and which purpose each one would serve? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it um, all depends on, you know, wh- what you're looking for. Um, if you're just mm-hmm. wanting to get your foot into the market, um, into the the yeah, into the CBD property market, then you must likely look at a micro apartment. They start from 18 square meters, um, which could be likened to almost two parking bays <laughs> this size. <laughs> But um, they, they're so cleverly configured. I mean, you could mm. have, some of them have the pull-out bed even. So, you you know, if Ooh. you're having a guest or two over, you put your bed back into the wall and it's a comfortable one. It's not like old school. You see in those old sitcoms where this mm. rusty thing comes, <laughs> coming out, uh, gets pulled out of the, out of the wall. You know, it's, it's very modern. And then you've got a strip um, kitchenette. Um, maybe you'll have instead of a full, full um, oven, oven top, you'll have the two conductor or, you know, just, just two, a two plate uh, conductor, um, and a two seater couch, and that's like mm. eighteen to twenty three square meters in a small little balcony. You know, that's being confined to two four walls again. Um, from 20, and this would be a micro, say, right? That's a micro apartment. Yeah, mm. so that's okay. that's great for a um, to purchase. You want to stay it's in yourself, or maybe you and your partner, or just yourself for a few years. Um, and mm-hmm. then you can just also you check your your the the sorry the building body of corporate rules before you purchase that it can then be used as a a, a short term let Airbnb and then oh. that's how you'd hold the unit you know you just have it as a short term let or six months kind of six months one year kind of let thing to to get income from the unit 
Um, and then from there, you'd have your 20 squares up to maybe 25 would be a studio apartment. Um, and then, okay. and then so up it goes. Um, yeah. A part hotel, sorry, a part hotel is where part of the building is also a hotel. Um, and you can purchase a unit in that building, in the development, and then take advantage of the the offerings of the property. Um, so maybe it's a concierge service. They could be cleaning um, on site. Mm-hmm. You know, they could clean your units, and that's all, all part of your levy. Um, so you have your rate, which is the, your general property taxes, and then your levy, which is in the sectional title for your unit. And then, like, the cleaning would form part of your levy. So, yeah, those are the various um, scenarios when purchasing. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we'll get to know more about those ones when they've got mm-hmm. even new ones coming up so that um, mm-hmm. young people can be encouraged to own property. And thank you so much to, to everyone who, who's really engaging on our conversation and bringing in those green hearts. We see you and we are really, really grateful that you guys are here with us tonight. So then we are going to, I'm just going to really close it off here and, and thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, it's been a really, really informative conversation and thank you so much for sharing your insights with us. And re- I hope that somebody who is watching um, really gained a lot from the conversation that we had tonight. Thank you, Thank Thank you. you so Thank much, Justin. So we have come to the end of our episode tonight and thank you so, so much. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the questions. And of course, for tuning in, please do share this episode even after we have gone live with anyone you think might require to hear such information because yes, we are we are just as strong as the information that we have. We're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow, same time, same place, right here on the Private Property Facebook page, 7 p.m. at... Um, uh, uh, so keep, keep those green hearts coming and have yourself a great evening. Thank you.